Picasso, Peace and Freedom is an exhibition that looks at Picasso after the Second World War. In October 1944, Picasso joins the Communist Party and this becomes a very important and much publicised event. The already then greatest living artists joining the party and subscribing to the Communist cause and the peace movement made headline news around the world. When we decided to make the commission, um, I talked to Nick Cox, our section leader, clarinetist, about whether he would like to do a solo um, piece with Ensemble 1010, and whether he, um, which composer he would like to have. And eventually Nick came up with the name of Bene Casablancas, and we were in touch with him. He was delighted to uh, accept the commission, and here we are at the culmination of, of, of that event. When Andrew Cornell and Nicholas Cox suggested that I develop some kind of link between my new piece and the big Picasso exhibition at Tate Gallery, Liverpool, I had no doubt in making a homage to Picasso and taking this symbolic motif as the centre of my work, because it alludes to one of the most important conflicts of the human condition. Peace and war point to an eternal confrontation of forces along the entire history of mankind and forces us to overcome our darker side. The discovery of Picasso's works was one of my first and strongest artistic shocks in my youthful years. Picasso, you know, was very linked to Barcelona and Catalonia. Cubism was born there, and I was especially fascinated when I could examine his childhood books, absolutely full of different kinds of drawings and sketches, very professional and imaginative, with a rich amount of formal variation, this last a very musical quality indeed. There is of course a long history of a dialogue between modern art and modern music and um, it, it starts in the 19th century. Uh, we only have to think about someone like Kandinsky and um, his combination of colours and expressive forms with certain sounds, with certain moods. Synesthesia is of course one of the most powerful manifestations and I think that's something we can trace through the entire history of 20th century art and it's actually something artists are quite interested in again, trying to combine visual impact with, um, with music and, and sound. So I think there's a, I think it's sort of a mutual enhancement of um, those two forces. First, I like art very much, so I find powerful points of inspiration in it. Most important, I find amazing stimulation for myself and for the audience in the feedback with other artistic fields and dialogue with the other artistic languages. I hope this may work too for the listeners, trying to increase their own perceptions and sensations. Yeah, Spanish music has um, a real immediacy to it. It often has something, something of the dance about it. I mean, you think about, uh, uh, you know, the jota or you know, Spanish dances, the Malaquena, uh, um, and uh, um, Andalusian um, uh, uh, music, which has, you know, a lot of it has uh, has Moorish and Gypsy um, about it. I wouldn't say that the clarinet in this piece is the kind of improvisatory uh, um, gypsy Moorish uh, um, uh, influence of, 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 of Andalusian music, but you will notice in the, um, uh, in, in the real preoccupation with um, um, figuration, with uh, um, repeated phrases, um, that kind of thing, you hear almost in the background um, this uh, uh, um, feeling of, um, uh, of dance going on. It's now 20 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall and also just after one of the deepest crises of the capitalist system we've gone through. And I think this is a very pertinent moment thinking about um, art and the political commitment of artists, how they can contribute to a change in society. Composers so often talk about character in their music and music is such a, such a nebulous thing. It, existing as it does in time uh, and existing 
only in the moment in which it occurs. And, and you, as, as people who, who, who experience it, have to experience it simultaneously with us. If, if, as we walk around a Picasso exhibition, you can choose to experience one canvas for 30 seconds or, or 20 minutes. You know, this piece we will all experience exactly the same way in exactly the same amount of time. And in order to heighten the characters and the dramatic journey and to make them clear so that the, that the drama and the emotions that the composer has thought and so carefully uh, put to, to, to paper, to pen, in, in the weird, incredibly poor tool we have known as musical notation. It, 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 it says so little but leaves so very much to the imagination. Uh, often art or poetry or just life experiences inform all, all of the music that, that we play.